Let me tell you how familiar spirits operate. You know, have you heard about familiar spirits? Do you know how they operate? Let me tell you. A familiar spirit, right, is, is a spirit or there are groups of spirits that have dwelt across a region for a very long time. They have studied the vulnerabilities of the people and built strongholds from their vulnerability. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have, they have over hundreds and probably thousands of years dwelt in a region that's why they are called familiar they understand everything about the lineage they understand everything about that territory and they have been able to study patterns and they have found the best pattern that they can create a door out of that's the reason why you find out that many territories have certain limitations is that true there are tribes that their own their own um unbecoming is immorality is that true there are tribes that their own is hatred. There are tribes that their own is anger. There are tribes that the men are careless. Is that true? Generally careless. Born again or not born again. The men are just careless. There are tribes and territories where in almost any, every family, you must find one or two daughters that um, may have a child before marriage. Is that true? There are other families that you, out of 10 people, you may find only one that can sustain their marriage. Familiar spirits. They build strongholds across the vulnerabilities of territories and they use it as their entrance. So, the man of God may be in ministry, but he has not dealt with these areas and he thinks it does not matter. And he finds out that although he's in ministry, that anger that surrounded his territory is still affecting him in ministry and there are many doors god will send partner to the ministries he will drive them out because of anger are you seeing that now you love god you are born again but the devil can sing choruses in and out of your life without restraint because there is a part of culture that some of us have refused to let go there are it's amazing as young as we are there are some of us that your, your, your love and affinity towards culture is very disturbing. As young as you are, when it comes to culture, you behave as if you are 70 years old. It must be done culturally. As young as you are, and you wonder, my goodness, what happened to this person? Hallelujah. Cultural influences. They have defined our perception about God they have defined our perception about marriage. Is that true? They have defined our perception about ministry. There are all kinds of men of God doing ministry in Nigeria. And when you look at the ministry, you see culture following the ministry too. There are aspects of culture that will never leave. Because we have allowed it. And for many of us, now there are very positive aspects of culture. Morality, respect and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, there are culture was designed largely to accommodate the operation of demons and spirits are you aware of that and many of us are given that template and the devil's strategy is this he says become a christian you can become a christian i'm not stopping you but i want you to go together with that take two of them so you can be praying in tongues while i enter and wreak havoc in your life hallelujah so it is possible to find a christian right now the moment there is stomach pain he just remembers that there's there's one special kind of of concoction now i'm not just talking about um your ability to discern trees that heal that one you know that there are things that you add to it so the the man of god is born again but under certain situations huh when you find out that they are not giving you the job after service you just call somebody and say is, is there nothing we can do about it what they are saying is ah let's go to the other way culture everybody say culture till today there are many for instance many tribes and many territories across nigeria that part of the rights that lead to marriage are largely occultic and devilish 
Are you getting me? In fact, others, they do certain direct devilish things. You know it. You know that this is invoking a spirit to come and guide you. Someone once told me about, I won't mention where the person is from, but then they told me that there is a spirit that they invoke when they are about to get married and he goes with the family. You understand? To make sure that they are protected. And this is how our forefathers, many of our, let me tell you, as you are laughing, I hope you know that every single tribe, tongue, nation, and territory in this country has contributed our share of permitting demons because of our culture. I schooled at a particular place. Um, careful. I schooled at a particular place in, in Plateau State and um, they had masquerades. Praise God. Can you still hear me? Are you with me? They had masquerades. And it was said that one of the masquerades, that the guy had authority to command bees. Bees. So, if you did something wrong and they go and invoke the power of those masquerades, you will just be walking on the street and all of a sudden, you will find out that untold amounts of bees will just come and invade you and, and the sting, you know that the sting is not just a normal sting of bees because it's occultic. Everybody say culture. There are some of us, for instance, before your parents release you to come to school or do anything, they tell you there is a particular right or cultural right that you must be engaging. Am I being sincere tonight? Hallelujah. And now, for some of us, or many of us, in innocence, we have opened up ourselves and allowed these things to shape our mindsets. I know many cultures where when they give birth to children, they take the children to all kinds of places and they have some, some kind of fraternity with demonic spirits to protect and, and, and guide the children. And the demons will seemingly protect the children. But then it is at the expense of the destiny of that child. Everyone say culture. Number two. Mindsets are formed as a result of past experiences. You can put on your phone to just help you as you write. Past experiences. Whether good or bad, your experiences in life, it has a way of um, creating a mindset in you. I'll give you an instance. A lady who was probably abused growing up. Hallelujah. Maybe molested by a pastor or her relative or somebody may grow up having a mindset that all men are devils. All men are destructive, whether they are born again or not. In fact, there are still some of you sitting down right now. Probably you had three or four or five or more relationships. And maybe most of those relationships are with believers. But then at the end of it, you've had one disappointment or the other. And on the strength of those experiences, you have been able to draw what you call a logical conclusion. That all men are wicked. It's just that some are more wicked than others. All are wicked. You see that? So, when God wants to do great things in your life, something comes to limit you. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Number three, your mindset is formed by your level of exposure. Level of exposure. Thank you. I think I'm good. I'm okay. Your level of exposure. That means, now not to insult you, but if you grew up in the village entirely in the village you've not had any kind of uh exposure you grew up in the village there are certain possibilities that 
exist in the village. Right? And you may not know that life can be lived at a higher level. Is that true? So you may be old, but the truth is that there is an ideology that you take along. Your level of exposure. There are people, for instance, who growing up, they never serve them food in their own plate. You know this kind of communal, these families with many children, especially polygamous families, they now say food is ready. Food is ready means secure your spot. Just find somewhere and sit down. Because whatever is a big, big plate, and wherever you can, if you, if you are strategic enough, good for you for that night. If you are late, bad for you for that night. I follow me now. So, when those kinds of people are growing, it affects their concept of kindness. It affects their concept of generosity. Are you getting me? When you see someone carry a hamper, a Christmas hamper to bless somebody, say, ah, this is too much. Ah! I mean, how can you lavish everything just on one person? Because all through growing up, you shared everything plus your clothes. There was nothing you ever had that you were blessed with and you said, this is my own. Mindset. Hallelujah. There are families, for instance, where father, mother, children all slept in the same room. Correct? Once it's night, everybody secures a very strategic area. Those who put two chairs together, those who put mats outside, huh? those who squeeze and do all kinds of things, mindsets. And so it affects you. Now, while you're laughing, I hope that you are, you are seeing how that mindsets are formed. Your level of exposure. And now, the danger is that if you, you are bankrupt in terms of exposure, if you are not careful, when God now begins to expose you, huh, you will push yourself into some unnecessary exposure that will be swinging to the other side of the pendulum. Have you seen people like that? People who you never... You never would have been able to afford a shoe of 1,000. Now you are in a relationship with somebody and he bought you a shoe of 20,000 and said, no, my standard is more than this. You see the other side of the mindset. All your life you use shoe of 1,5, highest. Now you have a shoe of 20. You say, no, 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 no. I suffered growing up. I must make up for this thing. Mindsets. Is God speaking to us? Number four, your association. Mindsets are formed um, based on your association. If you've lived your entire life having wicked people, heartless people, bad brothers who bullied you, beat you up, you went to school, you had seniors who beat you up, bullied you, it creates a sense of complex and inferiority and many things happen to you. Associations. There are many people who became Christians easily because while they were growing up, they were surrounded by genuine people. Look at our little baby now, um, Faith. Our little baby in Koinonia. Imagine how this lady will begin to think I was having a fixed class with the school of ministry students and then while we were praying praise god while we were praying i watched the little girl she was praying in tongues and just moving when they lift their hands she would lift her hands mindset because of our association that lady at age five or six will think like somebody at age eight because she has been relating with adults that's how some of you you are 17 but your mind is is 41 because all through, you never had a mate. All your mates, you didn't have mates. Your, the, your friends were ten times older than you. So you joke their joke at their level. So now that you are with your friends, when you talk, they say, ah, bros, how old are you? Mine's, have you seen people like that? Even the way they walk. You see the person walking and you're like, my brother, it's all well. You say, I'm like that, oh, please. Mindsets. 
There are people when they crack jokes, they crack ancient proverbs. They can't crack anything, anything modern and contemporary. When other people are saying, you know, if wishes were horses, the guy would just come with one kind of thing. Say so when a, this and that happens, and you are looking at it, say, my brother, the last time I read this was in one tribal dictionary. Where did you get it? That's all he's known all his life. Everyone say mindset. Your association. You grew up with your grandfather. You grew up with your grandmother. Their possibilities were your possibilities. Their jokes were your joke. You ate what they ate. Now they ask you what's your best food. You mention something nobody knows. Because all through, that, that's what you have been exposed to. Now follow me please. God is taking us somewhere this night. Number five, your family background. Sadly, if you grew up from a poor family, there is something it must have done to you. Must have done to you. No matter how godly or otherwise you are. If you grew up from a very wealthy family, if you grew up from a Christian family, there are some of us that grew up in polygamous families that are mixed. Is that true? Some were believers, some were non-believers. There are some of us that grew up in all kinds of family settings. And these things have created an impression in us. For instance, if you grew up in a polygamous family, based on what you saw growing up, you knew that your mother's side and your stepmother's side, everybody protected their own interests. Is that true? Now you come to ABU and your friends are saying, let's feel free. Say, no, I don't feel free. I, I protect and I guard my thing. And they say, no, we are innocent people. They fetch water for you. You refuse to use it to bath. And they say, uh-uh, we are all koinonia. They say, koinonia, wickedness is real. You see, a mindset. You came back and you saw that your roommate fetched your food. You say, God forbid, I will eat again. Because that's what happened probably between your stepmom and your mom. So you just felt that, uh-uh. The moment you are sick, you are suspecting all your roommates. Who is doing this? Somebody in this room, a man's enemies are the people. In your mind, you are talking about your own house. Mindset. To an extent that even when you say God has blessed you with something and they say we rejoice with you, you get angry. Because you are used to it. When they said they rejoice with your mother, that thing scattered. So now they say they rejoice with you. You say you rejoice. I'm saying I'm marrying. I'm getting married. And you say you are rejoicing with me. See, mindsets. We have had unnecessary enemies because of our mindsets. Family background can influence mindsets. Let's look at one more. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your failure and your limitations in life can build a mindset in you. Failure and limitations in life. You probably wrote jam 10 times before you got admission. Praise God. Or some kinds of things. Maybe you had to write Wayek many times. Or when you were in primary school, you had to repeat. Or secondary school. All these things are mind builders. They create mindsets in us. Now, the danger is this. Please look up. The danger is this. That mindset creates your picture about what you perceive life to be. Are you getting me? The mindsets that you have, they are like, they are like paint brushes. So, they can paint to you a picture of what the world looks like. A picture of what friendship looks like. In fact, a picture of what God looks like. You probably trusted God for something. Trusted God as a family. Nothing happened. And the worst of all happened. And then another one happened. Maybe a tragic event. And then another one happened. And then another one happened. Have you seen parents that when you say, God is faithful, they just say, God? Who are you talking about? God? Which God? Where was God when they were driving me out of my house? Where was God when maybe my wife or husband was dying? Have you heard people like that? Where was God when my child was dying of cancer? 
So because of their failures and their limitations, it has created a mindset about God. So when you sing all these songs about the faithfulness of God, and you read scriptures like, since I was um, young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. That man will say the psalmist lied. Because there is nothing in his life to verify that that is true. Hallelujah. And so you now compose a song with that scripture. And the person calls you a liar. Because he says, God, there, there are people today that believe in anything that works. Whether it's God, an idol, because they believe that, look, oh, if you depend on God alone, you will fail. So add whatever works. And that was the whole concept of the Egyptian, Egyptian religion. They had many gods because they believed that gods were limited. So one had a unique grace for, first, for fertility. Another one had grace for um, um, protection. Another one had grace for wisdom and oratory. So they believe that when you serve all of those gods, you will have the complete picture of a good life. Now look at me. Did you realize that your understanding about life today, your understanding about God, and your level of impact and breakthrough in life has largely been limited by your mindset. And for some of us, it's no longer a mindset. It has become a stronghold. Why has it become a stronghold? Because demons saw that mindset. And they saw that this is the exact kind of mindset that permits their operation in an area of your life. So they came and fortified that mindset to make sure that you do not even realize there is a problem with it. Hallelujah. So every time God wants to do great things in your life, those strongholds limit him. God wants to make you prosperous, those strongholds limit him. God wants to heal and bless you, those strongholds limit him. God wants to take you from glory to glory, those strongholds limit him. God wants to give you a good husband, a good wife, a good job. God wants you to excel and break limits, but those mindsets limit him. There are many people who may never enjoy a good home because there are poisonous strongholds that they have about, about fatherhood, motherhood, parenting, and so on and so forth. There are some of us right now, we don't have any friend in our lives. The truth is there are no friends. All the friends that we have are just our regular church people who just, just because of our connection. But we don't have destiny friends. And the reason is our mindset. There are some of us, you fight with everybody you come across with. Once you are friends with the person, after two weeks, you are already fighting. Something about your mindset keeps telling you that everybody hates you. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have settled down and we have believed that we will never amount to anything in life. Why? Because family background, culture, everyone in your family was a failure. The richest man in your family was a carpenter. And he probably had a bike. That's it. So it's a mindset. Out of the 20 or 30 people in your extended family, nobody has risen past secondary school. A mindset. And you have accepted it. So even when you push through to, to get a degree, you say, even if I don't get a job, I've tried. After all, I'm better than these ones that stop there. Whereas God wants to take you to the nations. Everyone shout, change my mindset, oh Lord. Shout it one more time. Change my mindset, oh Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest deliverance that can happen to a man is not just that demons are casted out, but that, that there is a change, a reconfiguration of your mindset such that you authorize heaven 
to now begin to carry out only the things that are consistent with the word of God in your, in your life. I look at people, I've had the privilege of traveling to many places in this country and when I travel, I like studying the culture and the ideology of the people. And oftentimes when we travel, if we are spending more than a day or two, they usually take us on a tour around the major areas of the city. They show us different things and all of that. And I have been amazed. I have been shocked and sometimes surprised at the ideologies that can be across a territory. Let me give you one. Um, in 2007, when I was in Port Harcourt, when I got there for the first two or three weeks, I was laughing every day. And the reason was because I have never seen that a man can be angry and slap your car. Are you getting that now? I mean, you push somebody and he's angry and then he slaps your car. Boom! The metal oh. And to him, he believes that that slap is supposed to have gotten to you. I said, my goodness. You slap a metal, your hand is paining you, the person in front does not realize and is supposed to be a communication of your pain. Same mindset. Number two, Lagos. I have always wondered how a man will rush and hurry his life like that. I mean, you hurry your life, almost enjoying yourself. You are trying to drop, trying to climb. And in the midst of the car, there's someone preaching. Praise the Lord. Oh, single, single. And somebody's dropping. And they're hurrying up. And I'm wondering, my goodness, a combination of spirituality and foolishness coexisting? Mindsets. Hallelujah. I went to a particular region in this country and I found out that it was the women that were on bike. As in bike, as in bike machine. My goodness. Yes, the ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies on bike. And I said, where are the men? How can a man buy bike, bike and give his wife and say, you know, go and farm or do whatever with it. Mindsets. Could it be that there are certain things that God has wanted to achieve in your life this year, 2014, but up till now, your mindset has refused to give him entrance? Can I tell you something? Before we blame Satan over everything, I am telling you now that Satan is not so powerful. The strength of Satan is the ability to build strongholds around your mindset. Is God blessing us? That's why you find out that there are people. Have you seen people you pray over their situation and nothing happens? Because the truth is their mindset opposes that prayer. The Bible says that we can pull down these strongholds. We can pull down these strongholds. There are many people who demons have been casted out of them. Yet, their situations did not change. See that? It's not all about demons. There are strongholds that are resident within our minds 